Welcome back, Washington football fans. I just wanted to make a quick video because of Zayvon Collins' weigh-in. Uh, his weigh-in has caused some people to jump to some conclusions, and I just wanted to get out in front of them and and, and try to explain or, or help people understand that it, it's not really a big deal. I've heard some media people suggest that, I mean, he could be moving to edge rusher. And I've actually heard some of my Washington football fam say the same thing. And they're kind of writing him off as a, a draft prospect because of it. And I just don't think it's the case now. First of all, some other people that I respect, Brett Coleman with Bootleg Sports and even uh, Mike and Sam at PFF have commented about it. And for a guy Zayvon's size, an 11-pound fluctuation in the offseason with his frame is nothing. Like, it's nothing. He's already playing at this high a level. His play weight's going to be way lower than what he's weighing in now when he's not as physically active. And I'm going to put some pictures up to like show his frame at his pro day where he was only 11 pounds lighter. And you can look and see that, I mean, he's got the space to put on some weight and still be the same functional type of player. But Sam and Mike at PFF brought up a very interesting point that I want to, you know, pass along to you guys. It even applies to, like, uh, Micah Parsons. People are suggesting that these off-ball middle linebacker types could convert to edge rusher in the NFL. And that's not something that happens. You don't go from being an off-ball guy. And sure, they have pass-rushing capability as blitzers. But it's a whole different monster to be taking on the left tackle and shedding box and trying to get past him 70% of your snaps than to, than to you know come off free from a blitz and, and get pressure that way. It's just not the same thing. And Zaven, as far as the two players go, Zaven's whole bread and butter, like what makes him such an amazing prospect, are his coverage abilities and his playmaking abilities in coverage. Yes, he does have the blitzing pressure upside. Yes, he does the linebacker things like fills the gaps and stops the runs. But what he's hanging his hat on to get him drafted, the most interesting part of him as a prospect is the playmaking and coverage. So for a guy to think that a guy is before he's been drafted to a team, before any team has committed to him, to think that he's purposely changing to a position that that doesn't happen like the change from middle linebacker off ball like those guys do not become edge rushers not in a 3-4 not as a defensive end you don't change from a coverage linebacker to a pass rusher an edge rusher you don't do that like that's not something that happens it's far more likely the other way around, and that's still super uncommon. You had guys like uh, Anthony Barr in college that was a defensive end, and he's become uh, an off-ball 4-3 linebacker. It just doesn't happen the other way around. I know Zaven is a very special specimen, but it's not something that, that is going to happen. The 11 pounds is just, he's not out there practicing every day. He's not playing football at 6'5", that big. An 11-pound fluctuation is absolutely nothing. 
If anything, he could stand, if you look, like I said, I've put up pictures here from his pro day. He could actually look to add on some pounds even at a middle linebacker position. I mean, he's he's not he's not swole up like some people and I just think that he's still he's still the best possible pick for us as a pos- a starting middle linebacker. I mean, at the very worst, the best Sam possibility in the league, but I just I just wanted to get out in front of this. I just thought it was kind of crazy that that people were jumping to conclusions over, you know, 11 pounds on a 6 foot 5 guy and like I said, I'd already heard this kind of dispelled from, you know, some of the better evaluators and Brett Coleman and and Mike and Sam from PFF, but I just wanted to kind of, you know, Get back with my bur- burgundy and gold guys and be like, hey, man, don't write this guy off. Don't don't get all bent out of shape on draft day because, I mean, all, all sides point to this, like Ron being very interested in this guy. Like he knows what a special athlete he is, how rare his blend of skills and size and speed and and smoothness like like flexibility and fluidness. Ron knows how rare that is. That's why he's, I mean, we're tallying up stuff, guys. Tally up how many times Ron's had interviews with this guy compared to everybody else. Like all the mock drafts in the world don't matter. You look at what the team's doing. Ron's calling this guy up, you know, every two weeks at noon. Like, like they're having lunch together. Like, I just don't, I just didn't see it as a big problem, and uh, it's kind of getting blown a little bit out of proportion, but this might just be me protecting my guy, but there's more than enough people defending it for me to feel comfortable that it's not just a bias thing. So, yeah, uh, again, just protecting my guy. if you liked the video, like the video. If it gave you a a new kind of angle to look at this all from, you know, hit me up down in the comments. If you think I'm just clinging on because, you know, he's my guy, let me know. But, uh, yeah, man, uh, thanks for watching. I love you guys. Peace.